we've last several weeks we've looked at Matthew 24 and 25 where he's he we've been with him as he said on the Mount of Olivets looking out across Kidron Valley toward Jerusalem toward the Temple Mount area and toward the temple and now he's finished those sayings and, and Matthew picks it up and says and it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings that he said to his disciples you know that after two days is a feast of the Passover and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. And while this was going on, Matthew says that the chief priests were gathered together and the elders of the people to the palace of uh, Caiaphas. And they were talking about how they could uh, arrest Jesus and, and, and execute him. In verse 5, the chief priest says, but let's don't do that on the feast day because of, there would be a riot. Then verse 6 and 7 and 8, Matthew is not, he's not chronological. He's not, he doesn't, he's not claiming to be here. But Matthew takes us back to just a few days earlier than this to uh, uh, an event that happened in Simon's house. And I want, I want us to see it. And I think I, then, I want to, uh, then I'll share with you why I think Matthew and the Holy Spirit is having him share this account now. But let's look at what happened first. It says, now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. First of all, this, this, uh, this uh, account is recorded in Mark and in John. And, and we'll look at some of those scriptures about this. A very similar account in, in Luke. And uh, Simon was a leper that uh, Jesus had evidently healed of an incurable disease. But they, they still referred to him. He was no, a leper no longer. They couldn't have interaction with him. But they referred to him. And every time they referred to him as Simon the leper, it was a reminder of God's healing and his mercy in his life. And so what had happened is Simon, it looks like Simon had decided to have a, 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 a meal honoring Jesus, this, uh, the healer. And he had, uh, he, he was playing, it was a big deal. And Simon, the other gospels tell us that Simon had invited some other guests. Matter of fact, it makes it clear that Lazarus was also at this meal. And Lazarus had just been raised from the dead a few days earlier. Not long earlier, a few weeks. And now here Lazarus was a walk in testimony of God's miracle work and power through Jesus Christ. And the, uh, and the gospels tell us that the chief priests, while they were plotting and planning how they could arrest Jesus and crucify him, they were also trying to figure out a way to arrest Lazarus and kill him and get him out of the way because he was a, he was a flashing sign. Simon was a flashing sign. Every work of grace, every, work, every miracle work in power of forgiveness and freedom in your lives. Those that God has freed from addictions. Those that God has freed from afflictions. Those that God has freed from sin are walking, flashing testimonies of God's power. And they're a beacon to those who are looking for help. But they're an offense to those who do not believe. And there's conflict. So here, Simon now, the feast was at his house. He had invited Lazarus, and Lazarus' two sisters are there. One of the other gospels tells us that Martha was helping serve. But that's what she did. That's how she, that's how she served. That's how she worshiped. Martha was helping serve. Mary's there. So you've got Simon, whoever's with him, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and you've got Jesus and his disciples. It's just a big deal. It's, a, it's, it's, it's one of the ones where you get out the folding chairs and you put tables around. It's a big feast. So he's having this feast in Bethany. And while they're doing, while they're having the feast, verse 7 says that there came to Jesus a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment. And she poured it on his head as he sat at meat. Now the other gospel accounts tell us that she not only poured it on his head, but she poured it on his feet. She anointed his head and his feet. I want you to look at John chapter 12, and I'm, and I'm messing these up. Hudson, you're up there? Hudson's, Hudson's behind the, he's behind the, the screen. I'm dying to say, I just, I just want you, 
awesome, Hudson. I was trying to get Hudson to play a wake-up call to you this morning, but he, uh, he, he, he didn't do that. John chapter, John tells us that this woman that Matthew refers to as a woman was Mary. John says that Mary took a pound of ointment of spikenard. It's very expensive. When Matthew says it's precious ointment, some, some commentators will say that this, this, uh, this uh, flask of, of anointing oil would, uh, would have would been worth a year's wages. I call that old de expense. <laughs> okay? It was an expensive, precious uh, fragrance, uh, uh, an ointment. And it says that she anointed, John says that she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. Now, Corinthians tells us, Paul says that the woman's hair is her glory. So we're going we're gonna to look at this just in a second. Mary now wipes the feet of Jesus. And, and this last phrase, just, I, this, is where I, this is where we was, Jim, this morning as we were worshiping. This is where we, and, and, the, and, and choir, oh man, how the Holy Spirit puts services together. It says, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. When, when you have been a part this morning of worship, when you've, been, when you've been where God's people have just been worshiping him, and it really doesn't matter, and nobody else matters. It's just you and God. There's, there's, an, there's, there's an experience that you, you, it's, it's almost impossible to describe unless you've experienced it. Once you've experienced it, you understand. And so here Mary now has anointed Jesus' head. She's anointed his feet. And the fragrance has permeated every part of the house. Now, look what Matthew says. Matthew says when the disciples saw it, they had indignation. And they said, this is a waste. This is a waste. For this ointment could have been sold and the money could have been used to feed the poor and to minister to the poor. Now, again, John tells us that, uh, that uh, Judas was the one that, uh, that really was making this comment. But Matthew says there, was other, <laughs> there were some other disciples. John tells us that Judas said this because Judas kept the money. He was kind of the treasure for the, for the uh, disciples. And, and John gives, lives, gives, gives strong, he, he is very close to saying that, that Judas, Herbie said first service, cooked the books occasionally. That Judas, Judas would, uh, had sticky fingers. He would dip into the till. And so what John is saying that Judas said this not because he was concerned about, he just thought the money ought to have been in where he could have had control of it. But here is this anointing. Here is this, uh, this worship. And that which the disciples saw as, uh, which Matthew says that Judas and the disciples saw as great waste. Notice what Jesus says about it in verse 10. And Jesus, when he understood, said to them, why, why are you bothering this woman? For she has wrought, she's done a good work upon me. They saw it as great waste. He says it's a good work because it's great worship. Notice what he says. For you've always got to pour with me, but you won't always have me. For she has poured this ointment on my body. She did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, what this woman has done is going to be told for a memorial about it. Right. Now, we see Mary three times in Scripture. And every time, and it's interesting to me, that every time we see Mary, we see her at Jesus' feet. We see her at Jesus' feet. And I think it's, I think it's worth just for, us, just for us looking at briefly because I, let me just tell you, there may be times when the world does not understand your worship. Matter of fact, there, there are going to be a lot of times the world don't understand your worship. But there even may be times that those who say they are walking with the Lord may not understand your worship. 
Mary was one of those people that her, every time we see her, it almost like she was misunderstood. But she was one of the people that was bound and determined that she was not going to let what others thought of her or what others said of her in her worship of Jesus. She was going to worship him anyway. Let's, let's look at this. First time we see her is in Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10. And it's in Mary's house, Mary's home. Now, it came to pass as they went that Jesus came to a certain village. That was Bethany. And a certain woman named Martha invited him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which sat at Jesus' feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. Martha and Mary were as different as sisters can be. And those of you, you know, the parents, I'm convinced if we have, if we have two kids, they're different. Okay, if you have a house full, if you have a quiver full like Travis and Pam, or if you just have a quiver full like the prices back here, everyone is unique and everyone is different. Okay, Martha seems to be the, the very practical one. And Martha's ministry was a ministry of hospitality. She would, somebody got sick, I'm sure Martha was one, bake them a casserole, bake them a pie, you know, and, and, and praise the Lord for Martha's. And she's the one... Here she's got Jesus invited for a meal. Mary's sitting in the front room listening to what Jesus had to say. And Martha's trying to figure out, have we got enough plates set? Have we got enough, do we, have we got enough bread cooked? So Martha's worrying about this. And she comes to Jesus and she says, Lord, don't you care that my sister, Mary, has left me, look at this now, has left me to serve alone. Tell her to get in the kitchen and help me. That's what she's saying. Tell her to get in the kitchen and help me. Now, and Jesus answers Martha, and he says, Martha, Martha. Can't, can't you? Martha, Martha. You, you, you're, you're careful and troubled about many things. Martha, I know your head is going in a lot of directions. I know the burden and the pressure of, of this meal and now these guests. But Mary, he said one thing is need, needful, and Mary has chosen the good part. It's kind of a mild rebuke. And I mean, if you're there and you're Martha, you're thinking, okay, let her feed you. <laughs> yeah. Where would the, the world, where would the world be without Martha's? We need these. But, the, but they're, we're different. Martha misunderstood Mary's motives. What did Martha think? Huh? She's trying to get out of the work. She's She's lazy. She's in there dreaming again. She's in there listening again when she ought to be in here doing. Martha was a doer, right? She was doing. She saw things that needed to be done, and she didn't have but two hands, and there was these guests and all this that needed to be done, and she said, duh. She's in there just getting out of work. She was misunderstood. Next time we have Mary misunderstood is in, in John. It's John chapter 11. And just set the, set the picture just briefly. In John 11... Mary and Martha and Lazarus, sometime later than, than in Luke, Lazarus has been sick. And it, it wasn't, it wasn't a, it, it, he's, as a matter of fact, he's, he's dead. But it was a, there was a period of time, there was a sickness, okay, where they were trying to minister him. They were trying to doctor him. They were trying to, to give him a, uh, something, medicine that would recover him or help that would recover him. We know this because they sent a, a message to find Jesus to come. Lazarus, your friend, is sick, and we've done everything we know to do, and if you don't come, he could die. Hurry and get here. Well, we know the story from John 11. Jesus waits. Lazarus dies. He's been put in the grave now. He's buried. And three or four days later, J Jesus' word comes. M Martha and Mary are in the house, their house. Lazarus is very, very painfully missing. There's friends and neighbors that are still there helping with them with the meals, helping with grieving it was part of the ministry. Word comes that Jesus and his, Jesus and his guys are coming. <clears throat> so Martha goes out of the house. Martha goes to Jesus, and, and we know this, and Jesus says, Martha says, Lord, if you'd been here, you could have kept Lazarus from dying. But I know even now, you know, whatever you, what, you, you could still, or you're still in charge, right, Jesus? I mean, you, whatever you say you can do, you can do. She needed to know. She's the practical one. And Jesus says to her in John 11, 24, 25, 26, I'm the resurrection and the life. 
He that believes in me, though he died, shall he live again. Whosoever lives and believes in me will never die. Can you believe this, Martha? And he talks to her. Then Martha, we're going to pick it up, with Martha running back into the house to tell Mary that Jesus is needing to see her. Let's look at this. And when she had so said, she went her way, Martha went away and called Mary, her sister, secretly. And she said, hey, Jesus is here and he's asking for you. So as soon as she heard this, Mary gets up quickly and runs to Jesus. Look at this now. Now, Jesus was not coming to town. was in a place where Martha had met him. Then the Jews, which were with Mary in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she got up in a hurry and ran out, followed her, saying, she's going to the grave to weep again. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, look at this. She what? Fell down at his feet. Saying, Lord, if you had been here, my, mother, my brother wouldn't have died. Now, Mary, again, Mary's the emotional one. And, and, and most likely, several times in the last three or four days, Mary had, did, had just got up and uncontrolled, went to the grave and uncontrollably wept. And here are the friends and family was, and they would go to where Mary was, and they would comfort her. They would say, Mary, man, he, he was a good brother. You got to remember the good things. You got to remember the good times. But you got to come back. You got to get over this. You got to come and eat something, Mary. You need to eat something. And they were doing the impossible. They were, they were trying to, to comfort the grief, and we all grieve so differently, Right? Some people, some people aren't married. They're very most. Some people, they grieve, we grieve differently. We grieve at diff different times. Sometimes we, we get it all out and it gushes all out and there's tremendous healing. Sometimes we grieve and it's like waves, ocean waves. We grieve and it's all over us and then we, we kind of are better. Then it comes back and it hits us again and we're all better. And then sometimes when we're least expecting it, we grieve differently. And you know that. But here Mary again is misunderstood because because her friends think that she's just overcome with, with emotion again. And so she, but she runs to Jesus' feet. And then we have the account in Matthew. And again here, she's misunderstood. What a waste. You know, Judas and the disciples, what a waste. Man, she's, she's that's, that's, stupid. that's a stupid way to worship. She could have... She could have got on a computer and printed him out a card, you know? She could, she could have done something. Just, 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 she could have told him. You know, she could have made him a little something. If she wanted to express her gratitude, she didn't have to waste this much money, this much finances. This is, look what we could have done with this. Misunderstood. But every time we see her, we always see her at Jesus' feet. And here she is at his feet, anointing his head, anointing his feet, wiping him with her hair in worship. We see her at Jesus' feet where she found her blessings. Just listen to his word. Listen to those promises. Listen to his teaching. It's at his feet that Mary brings her burdens when she's overcome with grief and don't know how she's going to go on. That's basically what she said. Lord, how am I going to continue? talked to Michael Vranick this week and those of you that, that knew Mike and Mia and they were members here for many years and they were very very close friends with Michelle and Bill Berg they were here for Bill's memorial service and Mia was a uh, she had some cancer and, and she was a part of an experimental group to treat this particular cancer in, in some particular ways and she had some reaction to the medicine and one thing quickly to another, and she died. And I talked with Mike this week, and he was on his way to get treatment. And he said to me, Jerry, how am I going to continue? So Mary was with, at Jesus' feet. And she was, she was basically saying, how, where do I go from here? What do I do? How do I go on? And then we see Mary not only being blessed at Jesus' feet, not only laying her burdens at Jesus' feet, but we see Mary now in this picture, and what a beautiful picture it is, and what a perfect example the Lord's given us this morning of Mary's worship. Just Mary's worship at the feet of Jesus. Martha misunderstood her motives. Her friends misunderstood 
or sorrow. The disciples have misunderstood or worship. Real worship may be un- misunderstood, but real worship can never be mistaken when it's present. And we see it here where Mary had purposed in her heart that she would worship him, that it was at his feet where she heard those words, words of life. It was at his feet where he gave her strength and where he gave her hope for tomorrow when everything seemed to be gone. And it was at his feet where she was bound and determined she was going to give him everything she had. Wow. Somebody, Larry, Larry Thomas, Larry and Kim were with us for a service. They were talking to Pastor Jeff back here. And they got some, got, got some stuff going. And, and Kim was talking about worship that comes sometimes through, through hard times. Worship that comes through suffering. Worship that comes through. You're not worshiping because you feel great. You're not worshiping because everything, all the bills are met. You're worshiping because he's God. And because you're in love with him more than you're in love with anything else. And Larry said, I've given him everything I am is his. I have nothing else to give. Boy, it's that kind of worship we see Mary. And we see her doing that and presenting that at his feet. That's where I want to be. For those blessings. That's where I want to be for, to lay those burdens. That's where I want to be to just worship him. Have you been at his feet lately? It's a place where the world is shut out. And it's just you and it's just him. And the fragrance, the aroma is unmistakable. Now, why I, I'm going to close, but I want to go to verse 14, 15, 16, because I, I think, and I'm not sure about this at all. This is a Jerry Helton thing, so please take it like that. Because Matthew goes directly to verse 14 and said, Then one of the disciples called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said to them, What do you give me? And I'll deliver him to you. And they coveted with him for 30 pieces of silver. Price of a slave, I guess. I don't know. And from then on, he looked for an opportunity to betray Jesus. I think the contrast, I think Matthew has shown us the contrast. Mary was, was, was given everything she had, the most costly thing in her life, that her future, her retirement, everything at his feet was just pour it out and give it to him. This is all I am. Judas who had been with him, had walked with him, had seen everything. And Judas says, what can I get for him? Mary said, what can I give him? You know, and I know this too, and I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you anything new. I remember when I was in the school system and we'd have, had this person came into the community moved in the community and said uh, and I'm, not, I'm not being picky I'm not at all but I, I, did, I remember this person said I do, I, this, is, this is my profession which church would you recommend in town for me to go to that I could that would be the most exposure you know Mary said, I'm going to give you all I got. Judah said, what can I get out of it? And I'm convinced the 30 pieces, so we, we know the rest of the story. You know, you know that. But we know what is it, what, that which the world gives, he threw it back down. And he hung himself because the 30 pieces of silver didn't meet the need in life. He, he got 30 pieces of silver. Mary gave him everything he had. Which one left? 
Which one left field? That one who gave him everything she had at his feet. I got a hush. The Holy Spirit and the, and the Father and the Son, Jim, in the early morning message that God spoke to your heart, has spoken very clearly and very well. Tremendous worship. I believe God has done things and doing things, continuing to do things. He does that for his glory. He doesn't do that anymore. He, he does it when, when Bobby shared in the, in the village there. He did that and he opened his little girl's eyes so that the eyes of the village could be opened to see it was Christ. It was Christ. He will be glorified. Scripture says we will either do it now out of a heart of worship and adoration. But if we, if we stub up, if we are self-made and we think we don't need him, there will come a time when we'll fall down before him and say, well, I was wrong, but you're right. You are king of kings and lord of lords. But it's at his feet where we'll worship him. Let's pray. Father, what a powerful, powerful um, message Matthew leaves with us of real, real worship. And Lord, thank you. Thank you, Father, for such a, a, a very visual powerful demonstration of that in our midst this morning. Unmistakable anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. Unmistakable God speaking and saying, I am God. I can do whatever I choose in however way I choose to do it so that I'm glorified. And Father, we take a look at this lady who was often misunderstood by her sister, by her friends even, and even by some of your disciples. And they would look and say, what a waste. Martha would look and say, what a waste of time. Her friends would look and say, what a waste of tears. The disciples would look and say, what a waste of treasure. (laughs) And you looked and said, what a great work of worship. Wow. Father, it's my prayer. For those here this morning that have never been at your feet. And they've never accepted your forgiveness. And that freedom that has been shared, that has been talked about that has been sung about, that freedom from bondage, that freedom from guilt of the past, that freedom from, from all the, 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 the old life has never been left behind. That this morning would be the morning that they say, Jesus, this is all I am. This is all I have to offer. But it's all yours. Jeff read the... the account of a teenager saying I've learned this week to give up my plans for my life and to accept your plans for my life wow wow what what an exchange what an exchange you may be here this morning and that may be your heart cry right now I need that kind of exchange in my life pastor it's at his feet when you cry and say Jesus come into my heart you can do that right where, you're, right where you're sitting. You can confirm that in a few minutes. We'll have a couple of prayer warriors down here, and they, they'll love to pray with you and just uh, let you show you an affirmation of God's forgiveness and grace in your life. You may be here this morning, and you may be one of those that, like this account that Jeff read, I felt him in my life. Again, like I haven't felt him in a long time. Robin says, stuff happens. And we have to, we find ourselves going back. Mary, it wasn't enough for Mary to be at his feet listening to his words. And that was it. It wasn't enough for Mary to be at his feet weeping and giving him a burden and looking for a a, a future. It wasn't enough. Mary, we see her emptying everything. Herself. Her pride, her glory, and her, and her hair, and wiping your feet in worship. 
And you said, wherever this gospel goes, you're going to talk about this woman and her worship. 2019, there's going to be an old gray-headed pastor somewhere, and he's going to be talking about this worship of this woman because she gave all to the one she loved supremely. That may be you this morning. And you may be saying, hey, it's at his feet. God, I've, 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 I've not been here in a long time. But this morning, I, 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 I know, I don't only feel it, I sense it. And in my spirit, I know that your, your hands are opening and you're saying, you're inviting me to come where you are and fall at your feet in worship. And you may be here this morning, and you may be like Mary. You may, a lot of times, you may be people, it may be friends that said, you know, you're, you're, you're crazy. I don't know what you're doing, why you're doing this, why you're giving this time of your life, why you going to all the expense in this, and what are you going to get back out of it? Let me just encourage you, as you hear from God, as you obey God, that it's you and God and let your everything we do, not just this morning, but what we do this afternoon, what we do tomorrow, Thursday night, wherever we are, everything we do is a reflection of our worship of you, of what we think about you, what we believe about you. Lord, may we be flashing signs to the world that says, hey, stop in and look and meet the one who's changed my life, and he can do that for you. In Christ I pray.